you. You look at it. Take a good look at them because you're looking at a miracle. Amen. 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 You take it for granted because you believe that intercourse always equals life, and that's not the case. All right. You you take it for granted because you feel like just because two people lay down, that's the automatic consequence, and that's not the case. You know how many people want to have children and they cannot. Yeah. You know how many people had children and those children didn't make it? Mm -hmm. Furthermore, from a biological perspective, you know how many young boys and girls simply didn't make the cut? Yeah. Yeah. Talk about 300, 400 billion. All right. You happen to be the one of the 300 or 400 billion yeah. that did. Yeah. See, we got kids. I'm trying to help you out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And God has purpose for your life. That's right. So I thank Sister Yolanda because she mentions a very poignant point about how if we are indeed the church, then our service must extend beyond the wall. Yes. Yes. It's okay, sis. Sometimes we get it confused. We think the church is the building. The temple of the synagogue is the building. The people are the church. And I'm so thankful for the genius of God because when he made the people the church, what he did was made it possible that the church could be anywhere at any time. Amen. And so what that means is they don't have to invite us in the building to pray. We'll just invite ourselves to the footsteps of the prayer. And you can't keep God out of school if you allow me to go in the school because I am the temple of the Holy Ghost. And so if I go in the school and I take God with me, then God is in. That you can't keep me out of a neighborhood, says the Lord, because if there are people who represent me in the neighborhood, then I am in the neighborhood. You can't keep God from going anywhere as long as you go. That's right. No, you can't. And so when we talk about January 1st, 12 o'clock. Yeah. When the Lord gave it to me, he gave it to me like a flash mob. Yeah. It's not an organized event. It's not something that we're taking credit for. It's whomever, whosoever will, yeah. that will come. Yeah. Not a whole lot of fanciness to the service. Yeah. It's just prayer. Because I believe if my people who are called on my name will humble themselves, turn from their wicked way. Huh? God says, then I can hear from heaven. Then I can forgive their sin. Then I can heal the land. Let me black cop that thing for you real quick. You ain't got to do a whole lot with your arms All right. if you learn how to do it with your knees. Do I have anybody up in the church? Yes. And we also got against flesh and blood. But against spiritual wickedness in our places, we need to learn how to fight a spiritual battle with a yes. spiritual tool. Yes, yes, yes. my God. Well, what if they don't allow you to be there? Wait a minute, y'all. Don't forget, City Hall is a public building paid by tax dollars. Right. Broad Street is a public street. The First Amendment allows for freedom of assembly so long as the assembly is not disruptive. We're not stopping traffic. We're not shouting at anybody. We're not doing anything but coming together in one centralized location at one time. You know what it sounds like the upper room. The upper room. Uh, everybody in the same place at one time on one accord saying, God, here we are. Here we are to worship. Here we are to bow down. Here we are to say that you are God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me and if you can't change it Lord nobody can yeah, yeah. My God. Yeah, yeah. and so after you do whatever it is you do on New Year uh -huh. you know where I'll be you can find me in the church uh -huh. some of y'all other folks y'all get what I'm talking about yeah, man. after you go to Waffle House yeah. after you do whatever it is you do and you wake up and get yourself together Wipe your cold out your eyes and make your way down the city hall. That's right. And let's pray. Thank you, man. Here's the crazy part. 
I don't even think it's in the prayer. I think the prayer happens to be a visual and outward act uh -huh. and manifestation uh -huh. of what has already taken place. Yeah. Yeah. I think God wants some folk to see. Yeah. Yeah. See what it looks like when people worship Him. Yes. See what it looks like when people bow down. Mm -hmm. See what it looks like when people defer to Him. I don't know about you, but the NAACP, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored Folks, Colored People, not necessarily doing it. Uh -huh. I don't know about you, but the National Action Network, though led by a minister, pretty good minister, the Reverend Al Sharpen, not quite doing it. Rainbow Push Coalition, led by the Reverend Jesse Jackson, not quite doing it. All right. I know you're a political people, you're politically savvy, you stay in the newspaper because that's what type of church this is. They got a Bible on one hand, newspaper on the other. But whether they're Democrat or Republican, ain't quite doing it. Proof to me, preacher, this city, the city of Richmond, has actually been led by Democratic leaders for 40, 50 years, yet we still have the highest poverty yeah. rate in the region, yet yeah. we still have the highest yeah. incarceration right. rate in the region, yet we still have high and unemployment yeah. among African American brothers in the region. We got all of that. Yeah. So I love my President Barack Obama and his party, but I don't lean on him. All right, all right. I love the advocacy yeah. of the NAACP, but I don't lean on them. All right. I love what the Southern Christian Leadership Conference is doing. But I don't lean on them. Yes. I lean on Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely. All together worthy. All together Right here, here I am. Here I am. Oh, 
It's a version. Just as long as you got one, you're all right with me. It says, And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And that same man was a just and devout one, uh -huh. waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. Uh -huh. And it was revealed to him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death uh -huh. before he had seen the Lord Christ. Uh -huh. They already missed it. Reverend, I'm going to go ahead and move on. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents, Mary and Joseph, brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law and his dedication, then he took him up in his arms and blessed God, and this is what he said. Lord, now let us, thou servant, depart in peace. Can a black cop for you? I can die now. According to your word, God, because my eyes have seen thy salvation which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. A light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people in Israel. We've been doing this for the entirety of December. I hope you're not bored with it. This is the Christmas story part three. Somebody say numero tres. And I simply say, you will see me, says the Lord, before you die. Message number three, look at your neighbor real quick, look him square in the face. You will see the Lord. You will see the Lord before you die. Somebody pray with me now. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you. I praise you for where we are in this moment in time. I thank you for the gift of life and all you have afforded us, oh God. And I just pray, though, that you just continue to have your way in our lives. That we would move out of the way that you can have your way. Let us be washed by the cleansing of the word, Lord. Do for us, God, what we can't do for ourselves now, in this moment, in this hour. Inhabit the praise of your people. And allow us not to go out of this place the same way we came into this place. Lord, there are quiet petitions, O oh Lord. Uh, prayers that people have prayed in their closets and in the quiet labyrinths of their own mind. God, I pray that today you hear what nobody else heard and you tell what nobody else can tell so that they might move in a way that they could not move before. And as you bless us, God, at this place and in this season, we will be also careful, God, to not take the credit, but to give you all the honor and the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Somebody give God some praise if you go into your seat. Tell your neighbor, don't even worry about it. You're going to see it. Oh before you look down. All right. Yes. I tell them, give a little over. Your endurance messes with you when you get a little over. When I was William's age, Chili Will I used to play basketball all night long. He used to have to beg me to get off the court. Now you got to beg me to get on the court. And so I come now to third Sunday, December part three of the series, the Christmas story part three. We've we've had some fun with it, but I hope that what you're getting even more so is a true spirit and meaning of what Christmas is, amen. Because if I've said it once, I've said it twice, as a matter of fact, at this point, I've said it three times. Mm -hmm. I believe that we have come a long way. Amen. But at the same time, I believe we have moved far from what the meaning yeah, yeah. of Christmas is. Yeah. Come on now, all I hear nowadays is Santa Claus is coming to town. Yeah. Santa Claus is coming. Yeah. To town. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. I even hear Chris Brown trying to chime in on the day. Hang on a mistletoe. I want to get to know you better. This Christmas. Commercials from Radio Shack and Toys R Us. But I can't quite get into it. All right. Because underneath the layer 
the guise of what we say Christmas is. I'm feeling a different undercurrent. Come on, yeah. yeah. I'm feeling an undercurrent of greed and selfishness. Yeah. yeah. Right. Come on now, I like to hang mistletoe just like the rest of them. Who don't want to kiss on the cheek? Amen. Amen. Trying to help them keep your children. <laughs> Who don't want to put up a old time in the bottom? A nice Christmas tree and adorn it with tinsels and lights. But I'm getting the feeling that Christmas has become more about what I can get than what I can give. Come on and walk with me. I mean, I hear holly, but I never hear holy. Uh -huh. Come on, come on. You missed it. Come on. I hear Chris Kringle, not Jesus Christ. Come on. You missed it. And on the 25th of December, the day where we ha we have designated that we will celebrate his birthday, uh -huh. my only concern is the presence that I'm getting. This is what blows my mind. Yo, yo, I'm beginning to wonder whether or not people give presents because they're getting presents or just because the presence of God is in their heart. When's the last time you ever went to a birthday party for somebody and the focus and main agenda was what you were getting versus what you were bringing? I don't mind if it gets quiet because it bothers me, y'all. How little by little even the people of God define themselves and get excited about what is underneath the tree mm -hmm. yeah. while missing who hung on the tree. My God, my God. And so the, the, the clarity and the chastity and the charity, the pureness and the love that is inherent or was inherent in Christmas the meaning of family and coming together and when you come together even if you have nothing you have everything because you have the people around you who love you right, all right. has been traded for gifts he went to jail <laughs> Amen. but he missed Christmas Eve service Come on. Macy's has a great marketing plan Lexus has a marketing plan. Yeah, yeah. Buy me a Lexus sis with a bow on top of it. Uh -huh. Come on now. Now Audi did them even better uh, because Audi takes the same Lexus with the same bow and drives their Audi past it and now the wife don't want the Lexus but wants the Audi. Yeah. Let me tell you something. If I was that Negro that bought her that Lexus and put that bow on it and she had the mood to turn her head, wouldn't be no Christmas round that thing. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. <laughs> Santa Claus don't even push a sleigh anymore. Santa Claus pushes a red two-door Mercedes Benz coupe. Rudolph is unemployed because he got horsepower. Don't need reindeer power. And I'm saddened because I see Jesus being moved from the forefront. Pushed to the back. And I'm asking, where is the church's marketing plan? All right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Macy's can want you to go to their sale and they can make a commercial and make you want to go see them and Walmart can get their sale and they can make you want to go see them and Mercedes can make their pitch and they can make you want to go and see them but how come the people of God are not mark I'm sorry, evangelizing in such a way during the season that is Jesus is in such a way that people want to come see him come on, my God free, free, Jack. we'll be uh, on top of our game this time of year we're going to have more sales, I'm sorry, more saves than anybody up in this place. At this time of the year, we ought to be talking about it. Unless somebody who sits up high and looks down low. Uh, 